Welcome to the Fat Emperor Podcast. I'm your host, Ivor Cummins. From a basic science perspective, uh, there's an enormous amount of evidence that, that suggests that this would be a very effective metabolic-based therapy. I mean, you can go back to, you know, if you want to go way back, you can go back to the early calorie restriction studies that show that animals are less likely to get spontaneous tumors if you maintain them, you know, the 25% calorie restriction over time. Uh, the ketogenic diet mimics in many in many ways fasting but also calorie restriction in that it suppresses the hormone insulin mm. and we know no oncologist in their right mind would quest should question that cancer growth is tightly linked to insulin signaling and IGF-1 which yeah. is kind of parallels insulin signaling and mTOR and many of the other uh, you know, energetic pathways, anabolic pathways linked to in insulin signaling. So the ketogenic diet uh, works by suppressing the hormone insulin to drive the liver to make ketones. Like that's really the driver. Uh, for, so from our perspective, from a metabolic-based perspective, uh, when you look at nutritional ketosis, uh, that produces a metabolic physiology that causes a suppression of the hormone insulin, uh, a depletion of uh, liver glycogen stores, which is kind of needed in, in some way, or a decrease in liver glycogen stores, and to, to facilitate hepatic, to, to facilitate the liver making ketones, mm -hmm. and an elevation of ketone bodies, which we have really put a lot of, of research into investigating the effects of ketone bodies in and of themselves yeah. and ketones can reduce glycolytic flux uh, through cancer cells that's been shown um, and ketones have an anti-catabolic effect so a muscle sparing effect which can be helpful for cancer cachexia yeah. uh, so there's there's lots of animal data uh, to suggest this what we do lack I will admit there is a lack of clinical human data to support that this could be an effective standalone therapy uh, and even uh, an effective adjuvant therapy so the the data out there is very compelling but it's not conclusive mm. and I think what we need is uh, you know we need human clinical trials and to to do that is we're you know we're in negotiate we're negotiating with different cancer institutes now and in, in setting up what will hopefully be a large trial to use the ketogenic diet as an adjuvant for grade 2 grade 3 brain tumors uh, when I got into this line of research about just five, six years ago, uh, maybe a little bit earlier than that, I was doing cell-based research, there was really nothing on clinicaltrials.gov. And now, uh, as evidence that, you know, that this is a very promising, compelling uh, approach, on clinicaltrials.gov, you have no less than 10 registered clinical trials of, of institutes that are, are doing this as uh, mostly as an adjuvant. Uh, maybe a few, maybe there might be two trials where they're using it as sort of a last resort when the standard of care has failed. But there's emerging interest in this simply because the last five to 10 years, the science has emerged pointing to uh, cancer metabolism, targeting cancer metabolism. And I see the ketogenic diet as like your base, kind of like your base, you know, fundamental uh, thing that you should do to metabolically manage cancer. It, without a doubt, it takes your foot off the gas pedal of cancer growth. Yes. And then it makes cancer more vulnerable to other modalities that you put on top of that. So our lab is interested in non-toxic uh, modalities like hyperbaric oxygen, cancer-specific anti-glycolytic drugs like things like 2-deoxyglucose, 3-bromopyruvate, uh, lonidamine, things that target cancer-specific glucose metabolism on top of that. And of course exogenous ketones which seem to have uh, effects in and of themselves. Thanks for tuning in, guys. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see my subscribe button in the middle of the screen, a free viewing of the Widowmaker movie on the far right, and myself and Dr. Gerber's book, Eat Rich, Live Long, on the left. Otherwise, please do subscribe to the audio podcast. Thanks.